Hey guys, we'll now learn how to dismiss keyboards and signal to users the authentication process. All right, first we'll let users dismiss the keyboard by touching somewhere on the view. Of course, to do so, we'll first need the view to detect the user touch. We can do that by overriding the touch began method. Okay, let's see what this method does. Let's print out like did touch or something. All right, let's run the app and see. When the app runs, we'll touch the sign in view. If this string is printed out, then we're good to move on. Okay, let's do it. All right, great. Our sign in view controller now can detect touches. Our job now is to dismiss the keyboard after this detection. Instead of manually checking which text field is currently the first responder, we can simply let the view do that. By calling this and editing method, the view will look for the first responder and ask this first responder to give up its status. It has a Boolean parameter. If this parameter is set to true, the first responder is forced to give up its status without any asking. All right. Okay. All right. Here's the app. The keyboard shows up and disappears. Okay, good. On Simulator, you can play around with the keyboard under Keyboard Menu of the Hardware tab. You can manually toggle the keyboard using Command K. All right. Okay. All right. We also want to dismiss the keyboard after we hit the sign in button. All right. Good. Now let's do the same thing for the sign up view. We'll also define a function to detect touches on the view, which will, res which will resign the first responder when the, si when the system detects a touch. Finally, the first responder should also be resigned after users hit the sign up button. All right, great. This is probably enough for dealing with keyboard problems for now. Now, we'll talk about how to report the authentication progress to users. This will greatly enhance the user experience. To do so, we'll use an open source library called Progress HUD. Progress HUD. Their GitHub page shows you how to install the library, but you can also download the files and drag to the project. Let's choose all the files and drag them to the project root. All right. Choose default options. Create bridging header. This is an objective C library, so we need to integrate it to the project. Now, open this bridging header file that was just created for us. This is where we do the integration. Instead of directly importing Swift libraries as with Firebase, we import the header of this library indirectly via this file. Now we can use the new library in our project. All right, let's try it on the sign-in process. Intuitively, we should start showing the progress right after users hit the sign-in button. Then report if the process succeeded or failed after it finishes. There are three main type methods we're interested in. Showing the progress, showing success, and showing failure. Okay, Xcode hasn't been able to detect the library. Let's build the app to update the change. Okay, we need the show method to display the progress. The first parameter is simply what message we want to show users, like please wait or things like that. And if you set the second one to fail, we disable the interaction during the progress. Okay, we displayed the progress after the first touch. Now, we need to report the end result of the process. For success, we can use the show success method of this library. The input is your message to users, like successful or so. All right. Similarly, we can report failure to users in the on error closure using the show error method. You can either customize the error string or use the error string from Firebase. Okay. All right, let's see. All right, let's run the app and see. Okay. 
All right. Okay. All right, here's the app. To test the failure case, we can input some bad account credentials. Notice what happens after the tap. This shows that the progress started with the message we put in. When the sign-in process finishes, we expect to see the failure message. Oh yeah, exactly what we expect. This is just the Firebase error. All right, now let's, let, now let's test the success case. Everything would still be the same. The only difference is how the success message is presented to users. Okay, the authentication process has started. The success message will only show up after the sign-in process succeeds. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Now, similarly, we can do the same thing to the sign-up view. Option click the sign-up view controller to open it in the assistant editor. We'll show the waiting message after users touch the sign up button and the keyboard was dismissed. We'll then show the success message after the sign up process succeeded and right before the view is switched. And show the error message after the sign up process failed. We'll also use the Firebase error message to report to users. All right. Moreover, we can also report the blank profile photo error after that we decide that we defined before. Simply carry over the message profile image can't be empty. It's your choice. All right. All right, good. Let's check it out. By the way, we forgot to log the current user out last time, so the view will switch after the app is opened. And we're just going to test the blank profile photo case only. The other cases are similar to the sign in part. Okay, let's try to submit some user information without a profile photo. Okay. Fantastic. All right, we'll start working with posting and stuff next time. See you then.